What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at SermonsDomain.com and today we're chilling here with Cool. Cool and Dre, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's poppin', bro? Uh, sorry, so sorry for the wait, man. She was a little so hectic good. tonight, but we here. Great things are worth the wait. Nah, nah. So what you doing out here in Seattle? Man, just came up, came up with this white party that uh, uh, my fiance uncle does every year. He does it up big, man. So um, came up for that. And uh, had a couple meetings out here, music meetings, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Beat meetings, I call them. <laughs> but mainly, main main reason was the white party. Came up for the white party, and um, did that Saturday. And um, I said, let me take advantage while I'm out and just do SoundCloud Tuesday. Yeah. Show out of Seattle and whatnot. So mainly for that, man, for that white party. I, I you know I like coming out here when the weather's nice like it is. You yeah. Know? Usually it'd be cold and raining. So. I appreciate the nice Seattle weather. <laughs> right. Okay, something I always wanted to know, you know, Dre was always very, like, he put himself on the records, you know, sometimes on the hooks and stuff, but you, you seemed like you were more, like, behind the scenes, yeah. so was there any reason why you never wanted to do, like, the hooks like he did? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think for Dre, it was more like, everybody was kind of pressuring him, like, man, you need to do some shit, you need to do a record, man, you, you know, you're coming up with all these hooks. You need to jump on a record, everybody, all of our peers, even I was like, yo, Dre, just, just do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, let's put out, let's put out some of your own music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think for me, I was just always kind of like, always been a studio rat. You know what I'm saying? I kind of like low key behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I'd rather just do a reference of a hook and have somebody else say it. You know what I'm saying? But. I think Dre was more, we pressured his ass to put music out, <laughs> which ended up being a great thing because people loved it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, yeah, so I think it was, I'm, I'm more behind the scenes, but I was definitely a big part of him putting out the music. Mm -hmm. And speaking of him putting out music, I remember, you know, you had the Chevy Ride High single mm -hmm. and then the remix, you were supposed to have an album, it never came out. We actually had, I, I actually have the album, you know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't it come out? I think this is what, this is what happened. Like, Chevy Ride High came out, and it was it was a huge success in terms of it being becoming a cult classic record. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, it helped set Dre up as a new artist, but it gave Rick Ross an extra push, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He had a, that record came out during the time of hustling. Yeah. And Chevy Ryan High was an extra bullet in the chamber for right. us, you know what I'm saying? So um we got we got at the time we we had got a first hand taste of you gotta work this shit yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like literally the label Jive Records at the time was working doing what they could do as far as working the record but Jive was at the time, and it's always been really big on the R&B side, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When it came to working hip-hop, especially hood records, you know, we felt they kind of fell short as far as the, the promotions radio-wise, even though the record was big for us. And we saw some of the same problems with the radio system over there at Jive, you know what I'm saying, with this new record. It had Keisha Cole on it. and. Um, we were at the time we were cutting the album. Dre was doing shows left and right, Chevy Ride High. And um, we just felt like we didn't want to take an L. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't want to just put an album out just because people were asking to put an album out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We felt like the setup wasn't in place for us to have a release that was going to be you know, have the right numbers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we just held it, man. We're like, you know what? We can't brick, you right. know what I'm saying? So, and at the time, a lot of people was catching bricks left and right. Like, if you came out and did 25,000, you was catching bricks, you know what right. I'm saying? So we're like, yo, we just we just didn't feel the setup was right enough, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Chevy Ride High got up to a certain point, but it never really went to that next level radio-wise mm -hmm. for us to come with the second record and that make the bang that we needed to make and us come with an album, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we never felt like the setup was right 
for us to come with the album. So right. we said, you know what, rather than take an L, let's hold it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so do be, you ever think the time will be right? Or is you know what, not over? because now, now, even so though I'll be still, we'd be still trying to take, we'd be still trying to talk Dre into doing, because Dre is an amazing writer, artist, you know what I'm saying? She's yeah. super talented, so, um, even now, I mean, it's just not, the artist thing, he lost the love for it when we went through that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He was like, you know what? All this stuff, getting up at seven in the morning, doing these early shows, interviews, he's like, I'm good. I'm, yeah. right. I, I, I'm content behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Let me do the executive thing, let me do the, the production thing. And uh, that's, that's up to today, that's how it's been, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? People still be trying to get him to put music <laughs> out. You might catch him on a verse here and there. Yeah. But I've been trying. Everybody been trying. Wayne, everybody tries. But through that, you know, we've been doing a lot of songwriting. You know what I'm saying? So like we wrote um uh what's the last Cali record? No, the the new Cali record that's out how many the, times? Uh, how many times we wrote the hook on that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I assume with uh, Wayne and Sean. Yeah, Hold You Down, we wrote Chris Brown verse on that, okay. a couple other things. Um, so we've been we've been we've been behind the scenes, man, doing a lot of writing. We actually co-produced and wrote the new record Khaled has coming out called Go Slugs with Chris Brown. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so I think he's living out his artist dreams through you know what I mean, doing the writing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So you guys did uh, five tracks on Currency's Pilot Talk two yeah. or three? Excuse yeah. me. How'd that connection come together? Uh, well, we've always been cool with Currency, man. Even you know, his, on his early Cash Money days. We'd always see him in the studio, and he was always kind of low key. You know what I'm saying? Just putting out his music independently, building what he's built today. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And uh, we've always, every time we've seen him, it was always love, love. We always shot him some beats, and you know, he was always. He, every time we see him, he like, yo, I recorded to like three of them records y'all gave me last time at the studio. But you know, it took a little while. I guess he was building his 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 movement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, we caught up with him a few years later, and he was like, yo, let's get in the studio. So we got in the studio and cut a bunch of records at our studio in Miami. And um, some of those records actually ended up on this Pilot Talk 3 project. Mm -hmm. um, and we just been close ever since, you know what I'm saying? Because me and Dre got this persona. We didn't... We never built this, you know what I'm saying? I guess it's just through the music that we put out. A lot of people feel like, man, I can't fuck with Cool and Drake, you know what I'm saying? Them dudes is, you know, doing, they're, they're gonna go over, they're gonna kill my budget, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, man, Cool and Drake's too expensive, or, you know, <laughs> or I can't fuck with Cool and Drake and be like, yo, fuck with me on this mixtape, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, but with Currency, you know, when he, when he explained that to us, he was like, man, we told him, I said, Currents, we fuck with you as an artist, we fuck with your movement, you know what I'm saying? So, we came from that. Mm -hmm. We came from that, from nothing and built it into something, you know what I'm saying? So, we told him, I said, look, whatever you need, you got, we're here, you know what I'm saying? If you need us to do a whole album, we'll do the whole album. Mm -hmm. It's love, you know what I'm saying? So, that's the relationship we got with, with Currents. It's a real good one. So, you've had, you guys have had your hand in producing so many records over the years, I remember like, Dating back to like 2001. So, yeah. what, were, what were some of your favorites? Who? Um, I know it's a tough question. It's a lot, man. It's a <laughs> lot. Like some of my, a couple of my favorites. Um, I definitely love that so much more record, Fat Joe. Mm -hmm. I think that record just had such a gritty sound. It was just classic. Like, record. It was like menacing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, definitely Rodeo. I love the Rodeo record with Juvenile. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Hate and Love It, which is a big record for us. Um, My Life, Game, Lil Wayne, um, uh, Big Dreams, it's one of my favorite joints too. Mm -hmm. um, there's a record we did on um, um, what's the name of this Trevor McCoy. Uh, What's the name of Trevor McCoy's group again? Uh, Gym Class Heroes. Yeah, it's a, there's a record we did on Gym Class Heroes that um, they had my man um, Daryl Hall, mm -hmm. Hall of Notes on there, mm -hmm. and that was like 
mean, that's a classic. That's a very you know, that's that's a good, that's a legend. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. it comes to songwriting and and um, and he actually recorded to one of our records with mm -hmm. Travi and um, it was a, a record that we wrote the hook on. He sang our hook, so that was like an honor. You know what very I'm saying? Cause we, yeah, yeah. Because we 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 grew up listening to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. With Queen Latifah, I mean, uh, when uh, um, Mary J. Blige recorded "Hate or Love It," her version of it, mm -hmm. that was like amazing, man, amazing feeling, because you never heard Mary J. Blige shout out the producer. You know what I'm saying? And on that record, at the end of the record, she goes, "And you know what? I gotta give it up to Cool and Dre for this beat." You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we were in Atlanta working with Young Jeezy at the time. We're like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> super happy. So yeah, there's a there's a bunch, man. But yeah, there's a couple. You, can you know go what I'm saying? All day. Yeah. So who's the most fun to, to be in a studio with? I think um, the most fun that we're the most creative with, man. I gotta say, would be Fat Joe. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know that's our brother, so it's like we just having fun. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And the game, I think game is we have an amazing chemistry with him. We know. We know what he we we know what he's gonna sound most amazing on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, it's just like when we get together with him, man. It's like it's magic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever we put on, whatever we put on, we know so it's gonna be something that he's gonna fuck with. <clears throat> and the minute he hears it, he already knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's in the booth. So definitely, game, Fat Joe, uh, Wayne. Um, who else? Uh, Currency is another one. Mm -hmm. These are just artists that it just comes easy, man. They just get it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They get it. They, they go in there and they just get to work. And at the end of the night, we're playing back five songs that are just amazing. You know? All right. I always like asking producers this question. So was there ever like an artist that you played a beat for and then he passed on it and then that song went to another artist and became like a bigger hit? Hell yeah. Um, yeah anybody in particular? Um, I don't remember if you remember the singing chicks. She used to be on Jive Records called, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Selena Johnson. She did a record with Kanye. Yes, uh, I, I know the name, yeah. Is it, was now. it that one? Yeah, Off All Now. Yeah. So, we gave her what Wayne Williams at Jive at the time gave her the beat for Hate and Love It. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which ended up being game's number first number one and our first number one and she passed on it and um we ended up finding out because we met with wayne williams when the record was number one he was like man i had this shit man for for her man she said no nah, she didn't like it i'm like who thank god you know what i'm saying and she passed on it yeah. you know because it's like it's a hit or miss somebody fucks with it they cut that front end right she might not ever make it to those ears you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Cause that song alone is responsible for over 30 million records. You know what I'm saying? So with just that one song. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and if it had went to somebody else, if it, it had went to somebody else, who would have known? It might have been on the album. You know what I'm saying? On the album filler. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, so it's, it's, it's a good thing. But that's one of them. Another one, um, New York. Mm -hmm. Ja Rule record. New York. The Ja Rule record was originally. Intended for Jada Kiss. Mm. And he still appeared on it. And this is the crazy story. It was originally intended for Jada Kiss. He liked it. He was like, yo, I'm fucking with it. But then Fat Joe heard it. He was like, yo. No, no. I had gave it to Jada Kiss. Dre had gave it to Joe without me knowing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, of course, Joe heard it. He's like, yo, this is my beat. Blah, blah, blah. We hit Jada. Jada was like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Just give me another one. You know what I'm saying? He was like, damn, I really like that beat. But give me another one. So Joe was sleeping on it. He was in record. He hadn't recorded to it. You know what I'm saying? But at the time, we didn't have the hook. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that New York hook. So I remember we were in the studio one day, and Dre was fucking with the beat, and I started singing the Karis one. I got a hundred guns, two hundred clips. Mm -hmm. I'm from New York. It was a Karis one classic. And Dre was like, "What's that?" I was like, "Oh, that's just some Karis one shit." He was like, "Yo, that's just not like it could be the hook." You know what I'm saying? So later that night, we ended up hooking up with Ja Rule. He was at the Hit Factory, and Dre sang the hook. And Ja Rule was like, "Yo, I love this shit." Blah blah blah. 
we had called Joe before that. And Joe was like, I'll go ahead and sell it. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Mm -hmm. I ain't really, I can't really catch the flow. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. So, long story short, we played it for Ja. He loved it. He was like, you know who I can hear on this shit? He was like, who? Fat Joe and Jada Kiss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn. So, so when Joe heard it with the hook, Joe was like, oh my God, it's the biggest record ever. We're like, you know, at the time we're like, oh, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's a dope record. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we didn't know it was gonna be the classic that it became. You know mm. what I'm saying? For like two dudes out of Miami to do an anthem for New York City. You know what I'm saying? Like when you in New York, there's Frank Sinatra. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then there's uh, Alicia Keys and Jay Z, Empire State of Mind. And then there's New York. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Ja Rule, Jada Kiss, and Fat Joe. So for us to be a part of uh, New York. A New York, a New York anthem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was uh, they didn't, Joe didn't expect it to blow up the way they yeah. heard it with the hook. He was like, I never heard it with this hook. If I would have heard it with this hook, I would have recorded it. We're like, yo, yeah. we didn't have the hook. You know what I'm saying? But nah, it's, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, Joe was kind of, um, he kind of was like, nah, go ahead and sell it. Go ahead and give it to Ja, because mm -hmm. Ja had gave him like, what's love, and Ja gave him some fucking monsters. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So Joe was like, nah, give it to Ja. It's good. So crazy to think about because that whole that whole that record kind of re sparked that whole you know the 50 cent issue. Oh, yeah, I mean, so that record, that record, kiss, that that record started a problem with Joe and 50. Like, yeah. you know, it was like it was crazy, but you know, and the record, you know, gave Ja a little bit of life, you know what I'm saying? When he was, he was, you know, people had counted him out, you know yeah, what I'm saying? The and they gave him, they gave him a little bit of life, you know what I'm saying? I think he, he was just missing that follow up. You know, he just was missing that follow-up record after New York, but mm -hmm. you know, still, still a classic, man. But yeah. I think those are the main two that stick out. The most. It's been a lot, though. Yeah. Um, lot. So what's what's next for Cool and Dre? What you guys working on? Um, Besides man, the Khaled single. Yeah, we got you know we got the 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 Khaled record. You know, we're definitely very instrumental in, in this Khaled album. Just got Chris Brown on it. Yeah, the new record is called um, uh, Gold Slugs. Yeah. And um, uh, we have, uh, of course, we had an artist by the name of Kent Jones. Um, he has a record mixtape right now called Tours. He's crazy. He produces his own shit. He's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the on the production front, man, we just we got our recording studio in Miami, Record Room Studios. We got this great platform to give artists new or new artists. Uh, chance to get heard, you know what I'm saying, and possibly put in the right hands and, and, and given some opportunity through this platform we started called SoundCloud Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 p.m. and um, uh, we have um, a clothing t-shirt brand there that that we're, we we launched a couple months ago, you know what I'm saying, that's for the bearded individuals like, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like us in here called Beard Sachi Cartel. Okay. It's all yeah, beard shit. The, the all shirt. beard shit. You know what I'm saying? So we got a big beard movement going on on Instagram. And uh, on the production front, man, anywhere from Currency, you know, um, Wayne, we did one on Wayne's new album that just came on the, um, yeah, sorry for the, the way. Yeah, Pick Up Your Heart. Yeah, and then we got a, we got a couple records on this new album that he's working on. Carter um, Well, he's working on, he's working on this, this other project, but he's called. Called, get, Wayne's always working on projects. You know what I'm saying? He's always working on projects. Like he's doing so with Wayne is always like, okay, here goes the music for that project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, got like three records on documentary two um, with Game. Um, uh, what else? Uh, man, just a bunch of a bunch of projects. Yeah, working on a bunch of stuff. You know the music, man. Has always been our our main focus. You know what I'm saying? So. A bunch of projects. You're gonna be hearing, you know, you'll be hearing a lot of new shit coming. Yeah. Okay. Final question. So, when it's all said and done, what do you want the legacy of Cool and Dre to be? The legacy of Cool and Dre, man. Um, I want the Cool and Dre legacy to be when people listen back to our music. Not only. it touch them and take them to a transition in their life, but when they hear that music, they be like, yo, Cool and Dre always stood for quality over quantity. You know what I'm saying? We want to be known for quality 
music, no matter what genre we decide to do. You know what I'm saying? And um, American classics. You know what I'm saying? We want to be, you know, 10 years down the line when they do top 100 records, we, we, we put in the work enough to where we might have one or two on there. You know what right. I'm saying? That of all time. You know what I mean? So we definitely want to know for for quality over quantity, man. Cool and Venom Cats, you know, came out of Miami when there was no hip hop, like real hip hip hop production coming out of there. Mm -hmm. And they made it made it out of there, you know what I'm saying? And took it on an international level. So yeah, I think that quality over quantity. Definitely. Well cool. I appreciate the interview, love, man. Love. It's been incredible speaking love, to you. Love. Once again, thank you. It's the boy Sermon, the sermonsdomain.com. You got any closing words you want to say? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely, man. You know, um, y'all definitely check out, follow us on, on IG, um, at Cool and Dre. Uh, that's the dual account. That's what me and Dre post on there. And we got our individuals, at Cool CND, and then we got Dre Day 3000. Also, um, make sure y'all follow at Ken Jones Official and uh, check out Beardsachi.com B-E-A-R-D-S-A-C-E Beardsachi.com and Beardsachi Instagram and just look out we coming with some shit <laughs>